Ashley, this is about Liam, the guy you brought over the other day. Do you really plan on marrying a man like him out of everyone else? What? Well, he and I have already talked about wanting to get married, and I explained the same thing to you all. Remember how when I said I was bringing him over to the house, I said that this would be because he and I plan on marrying? I know that. I wasn't questioning that. But you haven't heard anything from him yet about how he's not interested in you, or you in him, leading to you guys no longer being engaged? Huh? Well, he might not want to really get married to you is all now. Would you please not talk about things like that when he and I are getting closer to our wedding? I was so happy to finally find a man that understands me the way I want to be understood. And you're going to talk about our relationship like that? And by the way, he would never just leave me for another woman like that at this time. I know, I know. Uh, when both your dad and I met with him, we could tell he wasn't that kind of man. I'm not trying to talk badly about him or your guys' relationship, especially when he seems like a really decent man. Well, that better be the case. Then tell me, why are you asking questions like that, making it seem as though we would ever be calling off the engagement? Well, about all that... Ashley, um... I would like you to give Liam to Reyna. Huh? Don't say huh to me like you can't hear or something. I really feel as though Reyna and Liam would be a far better couple. Uh... That's why I'm wanting you to end your engagement with him right now, and then let Reyna have him instead. Wait. We had a family meeting, and in that meeting we decided that Liam would be getting married to Reyna, so you have no other option now. So starting today, Liam is Reyna's fiancé. What the heck are you saying? I think your cute little sister is a far better match for someone like Liam, and I want them to get married. You are her older sister, and you want what's best for her, right? So you give Liam to her right now. Do you think Liam's going to be okay with something as ridiculous as this? Oh, well, I've never heard of there being a man on this planet who doesn't want to marry Reyna. I mean, she's said to be the number one most beautiful woman in this part of the state, right? In other words, this means he has no reason to stay with you over her. I have no idea what's gotten into you, Mom. No matter what you try and do, this marriage between Liam and Reyna is going to happen. It's already been decided on. I'm going to talk with Liam right now about how I want him to leave you. So please do not get in the way of your little sister's love. And from now on, you are no longer to meet with Liam. Understand? Liam? Has anyone from my family begun talking to you about anything yet? Anything that would really make you feel awkward about them? Ah, Ashley. I was just about to text you asking about it. So this means... So my mom has started to talk to you then? Yeah, I was just getting a boatload of texts from your mom and they're all so... Um, well, let's just say I never knew someone out of your family could act that way. She wants me to start going out with your little sister. I didn't know how to respond back to her text after she said all that to me, so I was planning on asking you about it first. She just started with that? I'm not blaming any of this on your Ashley, but this was all a little... I just don't know what to think about your parents now. Especially your mom. I see. I guess she did end up getting your phone number back when you came over to their house the other day. I'm sorry, Liam. I was hoping I could warn you in some way before she got to you. Her and I were just texting one another about it, and she told me she was going to tell you about it. I'm so sorry. Don't apologize for that. Huh? I told you that you're not to blame for this. And the only reason I was comfortable with giving your mom my number at the time is in case we ever needed to talk to one another about her marriage or the wedding. Had I known this would come from her, I would never have gave her my real number. Just in case you need to talk to her? Actually... When I came over to your house that day, your mom said to me that you had a cute little sister, and that I should be marrying her instead of you. 
And then she told me that she'd get you to leave me so I could have my chance with her. And well, at the time, I thought she was just joking and wanted my number for when we got closer to the wedding and all that. But today, I realised that I was totally wrong about her and she wasn't kidding. She actually thinks that I'd be willing to just leave you and go to your little sister instead. I've never even met your little sister in person, let alone talked to her. What if she's not even close to the type of woman I want to be with? I see. This... This is all just... Well, I never thought this could get so far out of hand. She didn't seem serious at the time, but now I realise that she has me in her trap. I guess I never had a fiancé before, and I've never gone to meet my fiancé's parents before talking about marriage, so I assumed something like that was a joke to lighten the mood. I would have never imagined she was being serious about it. What a way to change my views on life, when you and I are this close to being husband and wife. I'm sorry... You do not have to apologise to me, right? I feel like I could just tell your mom no to all that right now, but for some reason I'm getting this feeling that a simple no won't be enough to stop her. Yeah, you are totally right about that. When my little sister asks for something, or it's something my mom wants for her, there is nothing that'll stop them from getting it. Seriously? For the time being, you should just go find somewhere to hide. Find somewhere to hide? I'm sure that they'll be able to look up the address you live at, so you might want to find a place to lay low for a bit. They already know my address as well, so you might need to go find a friend or something to ask. Then let me go ask one of my cousins if they'll let me stay at their place for a week or two. Are you planning to ask your cousin from the next town over, who's in college now? That's the one. I work freelance after all, so there's no need for me to worry about commuting to work or anything. And I'm sure I can give a good reason as to why I want to go stay with them for a while. And I don't think your mom or sister will ever be able to find me there. That's true. Alright, I'm going to ask right away. Ah, right. I'm almost done with my lease at my current apartment, so we could probably start moving my things out of it to prepare for the move. That'll require a lot more work, though. Don't worry about it. When I've got things handled, I'll get back in touch with you. Alright, be careful, okay? Ashley, I can see that you actually went through with the plan and broke up with Liam. I'm very happy that you listened to me. You have finally become the kind and thoughtful older sister Raina deserves to have. What? What are you talking about? I have not broken up with Liam yet. Huh? No way. You're still going on about how you want him to be your husband? Oh my god. There is something seriously wrong with you, isn't there? What are you doing? I'm not going to let you get away with stealing your little sister's happiness from her. Wait, what are you talking about, Mom? Like, really? They haven't even met one another in person yet, so how would she know if she really likes him or not? Remember? That time when I brought Liam over to see you and Dad, Reyna was out of the house and she never came home to see him. I know, and their time to meet one another will come soon, but I know that when they meet, there will be no problems and things will continue on smoothly. What? Continue smoothly? Or are they actually going to meet? Back when Liam came over to our house with you, and after that, while he was walking home, your dad tailed him to find out where he's living. Huh? So I've had Reyna go over there today, and she's going to meet with him right now. Are you joking? You had Dad stalk him like that? Well, you were never telling us where his address was then. We have to know what part of town he's in, considering he's going to be dating our little girl soon. What the heck? You guys are all messed up. Jeez, I'm glad I went ahead and messaged you today on a whim. Well, no matter what you have to say about it now, you're too late. I sent Reyna over to his place, and I'm having her live with him now. She's living with him? I didn't want you thinking this was going on just yet, so I lied about her not meeting with him, but in reality, she's been over there for three days now. I can't believe things went so well for her that she's already being allowed to stay in his home. Is that right? That's right. All right, then. I get it now. So you guys are no longer going to need $2,000 a month from me, right? 
Huh? Two thousand dollars? What's that all about? Oh, you didn't forget about that, did you? Seven years ago, the company that Dad had been working for went bankrupt, and it took him a while to find himself another job thereafter. But that new job happened to pay him a lot less than what he was making before, so you guys asked me to start sending you both $2,000 a month. What? You've still been doing that for us? Well, you guys never told me to stop that, so I've just kept on sending you guys the money. All right? To be honest, I thought that 2000 was a lot to be giving you guys each month, but back then you had Reyna going to college and she also had a lot of costs that needed to be paid for as well, right? And since I'm making a decent amount of money myself, I thought it'd be fine to send that kind of money to you all, as it was for the family. But now that you are having your younger daughter leave the house and she'll be cared for by her soon-to-be husband, that must mean that you and Dad don't need my money anymore. Dad should be making pretty decent money by this point, so I see no need to send you the 2000 each month anymore. So in other words, there is no point in me sending you a monthly allowance. Right? Wait a second! Uh, wait, uh, we can go get Raina back right now! Huh? And you no longer have to leave Liam for us. So actually, uh, can you please keep sending us that 2000 every month? What? I'm going to talk with Raina right now, so please keep that money coming to us. Liam, you going to your cousin's place and moving out of your apartment was a perfect move. Huh? Did something happen then? Apparently my dad followed you home after you came over to visit my parents that one time, and he found out where you were living. Like he stalked me. And, well, later on they had Reyna go to that apartment to go and see you. What the... That's terrifying. And, well, my mom told me that Reyna and you have started living with one another. Huh? I'm not living with her at all, though. Yeah, I know that. But if my mom thinks she's out living with you, then where is Reyna gone? And what? What's wrong? Do you have an idea? I just got a notification saying that Raina tried calling me. It's rare for her to ever call me like that. And whenever I try talking to her, she never answers. I'm sure it has to do with what's been going on here, so try calling her back. I'll do that, I guess. Here we go. Ashley, we have no idea what happened to Reyna or where she went. Do you have any idea? What? And also, Liam wasn't over at that apartment either. I thought that she was living in that place with Liam this whole time. Did they... did they both run away from me? Well, you're half correct. What? But she's not with Liam right now. What? Um, what do you mean by that? I heard about it from Reyna herself. You knew that Reyna had a boyfriend this whole time, right? Uh. Her boyfriend happens to work as a contractor, so you assumed that he wasn't making all too much money. So you tried to get in the way of those two and find a way to get them to break up so that you could have her go out with Liam. Well, that's... Uh... Because if she had to marry some dirty contractor who's barely making any money, I'd feel so bad for her. And that's why you wanted her going out with my fiancé? I'm not going to let her go out with some nasty-looking hick from who knows where when Liam is a far better man. Well, listen to this, Mom. I happen to know where he's working as a contractor. The place happens to be known throughout the state as one of the best places to work with very good pay and benefits. What? And the CEO happens to be liked by pretty much all his workers. Of course, doing the work all of the workers have to do is hard on their bodies, but he makes sure everyone has good health insurance and that they get enough PTO each year to take time to relax themselves. I think that he's actually working for a really, really good company right now. But in your case, you never bothered to look up the company he's at and just chose to think he was poor? I never thought there'd be a company like that, though, for contractors. Had you just listened to Reyna, you might have understood things better. 
But it's too late for that now. Too late? About Reyna. When you told her to go to Liam's place and stay with him, she took that opportunity and ran back to her boyfriend's house and has been staying there. She ran to his place? They happen to be getting married now, too. Why do you know all of this stuff? Well, because yesterday I got a call from her and we spent all night talking with one another about what's been going on. I'm sure that you and Dad tried your best to get her to have the life you wanted her to have, and I was jealous at times about how much you cared about her, but not me. However, now I feel as though neither Raina or I was ever really cared for by you or Dad. And, well, last night I was finally able to hear about Raina's feelings as well. Um, Ashley, um, about that $2,000, uh, will you... Uh... Wait, are you serious? Now, of all times? Well, look, your dad's income hasn't really gone up at all since he was first hired, and, um, the cost of living here. It's just the two of you now, so you should be more than capable of living there with dad's income. But, wait, you're not working at all, right? Um, me? Why are you surprised? This is your time to be a good wife and find yourself a job, right? Um... As for Reyna and I, we have both found ourselves amazing men to make our husbands. That means we are no longer going to be letting you into our lives, causing us all kinds of trouble. All right. A few days after that, my mom and dad got a divorce. My dad wasn't making a whole lot of money with his current job, and my mom didn't like that about him. But when he brought up the idea that she could get a job as well, she flipped out. Anyway, the way I found out that those two would be getting a divorce was right after I told them about how Reyna and I would both be getting married. My mom apologized to me then and said she'd be leaving my dad for good. You might think that after this, my whole family fell apart, but right after my mom told us about the divorce... My dad, sister, and I started a group chat where we keep one another up to date on our lives. Now that Rain is married, she's asked us to come to her wedding in the next couple of months. And even said that Liam was invited too, so that means she can see him for the first time. But I had to make sure she knew not to have that wedding around my wedding because Liam and I are set to be wed in the next month. And just today we went to the courthouse and handed in our marriage forms. When it comes to my dad, he no longer has to support another adult on his income. And as a single man, he's actually making enough to support himself comfortably. He told us he plans on selling the house soon and using that money to move into a smaller house where he won't have to clean as much of it. As for my mom herself, she didn't have any parents to go back to and all of her brothers and sisters lived too far away and weren't that close to her to begin with. Out of all the stages in her life, she's learning how hard it is to live on your own in her late 60s. She has a job of her own now, but it's only enough to afford her a one-bedroom apartment and a little bit of food each week. And since she's now living life like the poor, she spends all day and night in her room, crying and crying and crying. Hey there, Hillary. How are you? When are you going to show me the footage from your wedding? Haven't you gotten back some of the photos and videos from there yet? Come on, I really want to see how things are going. Sorry, you want to see the wedding? I, I, I don't really understand. Well, I just mean that your wedding is a special day, and I'd love to see the photos that you had taken there is all. There must be so many happy memories already, right? I'm sorry, but I think that you were the only one having fun. I mean, I really kind of wanted to know just what you were thinking. What do you mean? Did I do something wrong? I promise that I really have no idea at all about what you could be talking about. Are you telling me that I might have done something to spoil the mood of your wedding or something? You know what you did, Gretchen. You showed up to my wedding dressed up like you were ready to go to a funeral. You scared my grandma so much, she actually fainted when she saw you. Oh, well, I really am so sorry for the mix-up. It's just that those clothes were the only dress clothes that I owned. 
I really don't think that's true. I think that you did that on purpose, but I don't get why. I think you might have done it just because you wanted to try and ruin my wedding. Oh, you mean it really was that obvious for you to figure out? Well, it really didn't take all that much to understand, thank you very much. And just what's wrong with me showing up to your wedding and funeral garb anyways, huh? Your wedding was so depressing, it might as well have been a funeral. But... Why would you do this to me? Do you really have such huge problems with me that you have to do this? I already told you that I don't approve of you marrying my son. You know exactly how I feel about you. My son deserves a much better, prettier, smarter woman in his life. Not some selfish little brat like you. You aren't nearly good enough for him. Well, I'm sorry, but Robert chose me because he loves me. I don't think that you get to decide who's right for him. There you go again, talking back to me and forgetting your place. You really are a spoiled brat, do you know that? Are you really saying that when you were the one who tried to ruin my wedding all because you have a problem with me? Because it wasn't just my family that you shocked, even your own relatives were appalled at your behavior. What? You mean that they didn't think that it was as hilarious as I did? No, I don't think a single person at my wedding thought that what you did was funny at all, actually. Well, it doesn't really matter, but what does matter is that I'm your mother-in-law and you need to listen to me. My first order for you is to break up with my son and stay away from him forever. I'm sorry, but that's not going to happen. There isn't anything in the world that could break Robert and I apart. I see... Well, if this is the way that you want to do things, then I suppose you leave me with no choice. What are you talking about? What horrible plot do you have up your sleeve next, huh? Oh, nothing yet. But I'll just have to come up with something even more shocking and horrible. Something so incredible that it'll force you to run away and never come back. If you don't want to tell me what the problem it is that you have with me, that's fine. But just stay out of my relationship with my husband. You know, this is why I say that women just shouldn't go to college. You get one little degree and all of a sudden you think you know better than everyone else. Women like you get so prideful and then refuse to take no for an answer, even when it's their elders telling them. And that's the excuse you have for why you tried to sabotage my wedding with that little stunt that you pulled? Well, if no one else had as much fun as I did, that's their fault, not mine. I really just don't even know what to say to that. I mean, do you really not care that you were the only one laughing at my wedding? That's not true. There's a group photo that we had taken where everyone is smiling, don't you remember? I told you that there would be lots of photos to remember your special day. Oh, trust me, I won't ever forget this. Hey there, Hillary. Are you there? Do you have a moment to chat really quickly? I just wanted to make sure that you knew that next month was my birthday. Oh, really? I had no idea about that. Are you serious? Is that supposed to be some kind of a joke? Are you really telling me that you didn't even know your own mother-in-law's birthday? Well, I suppose I just never really even bothered to ask about when it was, so... I mean, do you have any idea when my birthday is? Of course I don't know when your birthday is. Why would I waste the precious space in my head with something like that? I don't care at all when you were born, and it doesn't matter to me in the slightest. But the fact is that I'm your mother-in-law, and you really ought to know this sort of thing about me. I see. Well, okay then. Thanks for letting me know that, I suppose. You really are such a useless daughter-in-law. Do you know that? I mean, you really should have gone and looked this up yourself. I shouldn't be the one having to tell you all of this. I really am sorry for the confusion. I promise that I won't let it happen again, Gretchen. Is there anything that you would like to do for your birthday? Any plans that I can put into motion for you? Actually, yes. I have a whole list of things that I would like you to get ready for me, if you must know. 
And since it's my birthday, you should know that if even one little thing goes wrong, I'm going to blame it all on you for ruining my special day. I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Thank you for the warning. Do you mind if I ask who you were thinking of inviting to this? Well, I want to have my party on a Sunday, and you're to invite all of my relatives here. We're going to have to have enough food for everyone, plus a giant cake. So make sure that you have all that ready beforehand. I'm sorry, are you telling me that I'm going to have to put all of this together myself? Well, of course you are, unless you have a problem with that. If you really hate the idea of celebrating your mother-in-law's birthday that much, you can just say so. It's not that at all. I'll be sure to get everything ready in advance of the party. That's all that you should have said from the very start. Honestly, when are you going to learn? Again, I'm so sorry for not knowing better. May I ask what kind of food you wanted to have ready for the party? I was thinking of really going all out with the food. I want huge fillets of fish, premium cuts of steak, a cake from the nicest bakery in town, and anything else amazing that you can think of. Not only that, but I want to drive to all the farms in the state and figure out which have the best berries so that we can all eat those with imported gelato. Gretchen, uh, this sounds like it's going to be a very expensive party. If you really want all that food and enough for everybody, you're going to need hundreds of dollars. Oh yes, I have the budget, and it's sitting just comfortably under $1,000, actually. But anyways, it's fine, because you're going to buy it all for me. Hold on a second, you're telling me that I'm going to have to be paying for all of this? Well, of course you are. After all, it's my birthday. You don't really expect the birthday girl to pay for her own party, do you? I'm sorry, but even if I could afford to, I really don't see how all of this is going to be less than a thousand dollars now that I'm adding it all up. How about you just think of it as a present for me? Does that make you feel better about it? Also, speaking of presents, make sure to go out and get me a really nice purse, too. You want me to buy you a purse on top of all of this? And just what kind of purse were you hoping to get? Well, I'm not going to accept anything less than $5,000, do you understand me? So you want me to spend another $5,000 on you, on top of all the party preparations? I really don't think that I'm going to be able to do that. I think I'll only be able to pitch in to buy the food for you. Oh, please, I know that you work for a really big company. Surely you must get paid quite nicely as well, right? I don't see why you would have any issue with spending $10,000 on a party for me. Well, I'm sorry that you don't see any problem with it, but I'm telling you that I have some major ones. What, you mean like being a no-good cheapskate? Are you really trying to ruin my birthday party so far in advance of when it is? I'm not trying to ruin anything for you at all, and I don't think that's a fair statement. I'm just saying that I won't be able to spend that much of my own money on your party. We're still recovering from the wedding and the move. I just can't afford another huge purchase like those right now. Oh, why don't you just come out and tell me the truth, huh? Why don't you just say that you don't want to do this for me because you hate me? Just admit that you're a cheap woman who hates her mother-in-law and would do anything to see her unhappy. You are really not being fair to me at all. But if you want me to help, then we are going to have to downsize your budget. And that includes settling for a cheaper purse as a present, okay? No, that isn't fair. If it's not a $5,000 purse, then I don't even want to have to look at it. If you keep trying to shoot me down like this, then I'm going to force you to break up with my son. You can't really think that you'd be able to break up Robert and I, right? You think I can't? I'll do whatever I need to do to make sure that you two break up and never get back together. Unless you listen to me and do exactly as I say, that is. So why don't you go be a good daughter-in-law and just tell me what I want to hear? You really want to have that huge of a party then, do you? Well, okay then, it seems like you're really leaving me with no choice. But if we're going to do this, let's just have the party at someone's house, okay? Are you kidding me? You really are just trying to cut all the corners you can, aren't you? I don't want to have the party at someone's house. I want to go out to an amazing restaurant or rent out a ballroom. 
I am telling you that that is just not going to be feasible with how much money you're already wanting to spend on this. Can we please just have the party at your house? I know that you have plenty of room to host the crowd that you're hoping to have. Well then, fine. If you're saying that is what I have to do to have the rest of the party go smoothly, then I guess I can let this happen. But you should know that you're going to be in charge of cleaning everything up once it's all over, got it? It's my party and I shouldn't be expected to have to do even an ounce of work for it. Oh, of course not. I would hate for you to get your hands dirty with your own party. You won't have to do a single thing. Perfect! Oh, I really just can't wait. This is going to be the best birthday party ever! Gretchen, can I ask why you thought it was appropriate to kick me out of your house? I went through all the trouble of getting everything ready for your party just as you asked me to. The least you could do is let me come back inside and enjoy it with everyone who's there. Are you crazy? You really think that I'm just going to let you into my house? This is my birthday party and you had the gall to show up dressed for a funeral. What is the matter with you, huh? I don't understand. Is there something weird about wearing funeral clothing to your birthday party? Of course there's something weird about it. This is a happy occasion. You should be wearing bright colors, not trying to bring the whole mood down. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but this was the only nice outfit that I could find when I got dressed this morning. I brought it over from my house to change into after I finished getting the food ready. You mean that you already showed up to my house in a different outfit and you changed into that on purpose? Why didn't you just stick to the clothes you were wearing? You have noticed that I'm not the only one to dress up like this, though, haven't you? I mean, don't you realize that everyone at the party is dressed as if they're going to a funeral? What in the world are you talking about? Uh, you mean that everyone is dressed just like you were? That's right. All your family is here in the hot, hot weather dressed in all black just to help you celebrate your birthday. But... I don't get it. Why in the world is everyone dressed like that? What are they thinking? What in the world is going on here? I suppose that everyone else in your family only had one nice outfit to come in, just like me. And just like you, at my wedding. You should be grateful that everyone cared enough to come dressed up for you, though. Oh, come on, that's just ridiculous. Are you telling me that this is really just to get back at me for the way I was dressed at your wedding? I'm sure that I have no idea what you're talking about in the slightest. Give me a break. I know that you must have told everyone to come dressed up like this. Do they even realize this is all just part of a petty revenge plot? I'd be more worried about what you're going to do with all these people about to show up dressed just like me. Anyone who dares to show up to my party dressed like they're ready for a funeral is going to be turned away at the door. Well, then I suppose that means you're going to have a very lonely birthday party. Do you really hate all the black that much? You seemed to be having a blast dressed up like that for my wedding, remember? But this is my birthday. It's different. Today is supposed to be all about me. Don't you get it? Of course I do. That's why I invited everyone to come here just like you wanted. And I followed all your instructions about all the expensive food that you wanted me to get ready for your party. There's the fish, steak, fruit, and cake. It's all there, just like you asked for. But I didn't ask for anyone to show up to my birthday party dressed like someone just died. This is supposed to be a day to celebrate me being alive. This is like uh, the exact opposite. It's like everyone is just here to celebrate my dying. Well, that sounds to me like you have just a bit of an overactive imagination. I don't know if it's really all that bad. I mean, you do realize that everyone is here for your birthday, right? I thought that you'd be more excited to celebrate with everyone. Just admit it. Admit that this was all a plan that you came up with. Hmm, who's to say, really? Maybe we all just had the same idea and decided to come dressed like this. I don't believe this. This is just your way of saying that you wish I had never, ever been born. You're horrible. How could you try and treat me like this on my own birthday? 
I didn't say anything like that in the slightest. Besides, if you weren't born, then I would have never met my husband. So I'm sorry, but I think that you're just projecting your own insecurities over this whole thing. How am I projecting anything when everyone is literally here dressed up as if someone has died? I just don't get why they would all do this to me. I suppose your family just knows how to play the long game. After all, no one went up to you and said anything when you showed up to my wedding dressed for a funeral. But it's only because we all knew that we'd have to get back at you another time. But this isn't fair. How was I supposed to know that what I was doing was wrong if no one told me to begin with? And either way, uh, you still haven't excused yourself from being to blame for this. But I know that if I started crying and talking to people that they'd all go and change for me. Are you sure about that? I'm sure that there are some people in your family you could scare into doing that. But it certainly wouldn't be because everyone there respects you or anything like that. I knew that I should have never let my son marry you. It was a mistake ever letting you into my family. I should have kicked you to the curb the second I met you. Do you really dislike me that much, Gretchen? Am I really that awful to deal with? Because you should have known that I wasn't taking your crap because I'm weak. I just have more patience than you is all. So you admit it. You finally admit that you were the mastermind behind this whole plot to totally ruin my wedding. You might think that you've done something here, but you haven't done anything. I've known some of these people for over 30 years. No one from my family is ever going to betray me. Are you sure about that? Because we're all gathered outside here, so why don't you try getting people to change their clothes? I'm sure if you screamed at enough of them, they would go and put on normal clothes to help you celebrate. Well, maybe that is what I'll do. You give me just one second and I'll set this whole thing straight right away. We're all out here waiting. See you soon. Are you still getting ready to come out and talk to us? You do realize that all the food is outside, right? The only thing missing from the party now is you. I don't want to go outside, and I don't want to see any one of you ever again. Aw, what's the matter? I thought that you were getting ready to put us all in our place, no? Because we're still out here, dressed in all black for your birthday. Nobody listened to me! I tried texting people, I even tried dragging people inside to yell at them one by one, but no one was listening to a word that I had to say. Wow, well then I guess we really are doing something closer to a funeral than a birthday. But it isn't a funeral, and it is my birthday! This is ridiculous! How could you all do this to me? Well, it's only a funeral if the person we're all here to celebrate isn't here. If you came outside, though, it would be much more like a birthday, you know. You must think that you're just so funny for doing this, don't you? Well, I'm sick of this game. I just want everyone to go home already. I'm sorry, but you invited us all here for the party, and we're not going to go until it's over. Besides, there's still so much food to be eaten. And you think I'm going to come outside and help you eat? You think I have anything remotely close to an appetite right now? But I worked so hard to make sure that all the food that you wanted was here. And everyone is outside having a good time chatting. Someone even brought a boombox and is playing music. I hate my family for doing this. How could they all stab me in the back like this? Even my son is out there dressed in all black. Why did everyone come dressed up like that? It's because when you showed up to my wedding dressed for a funeral, you weren't just insulting me. You were insulting your son. And people did try to warn you and ask you to change. You were just too busy gloating to notice. But you told me that you were plotting this for so long. My whole family was preparing for this behind my back. Well, you should come outside now because this might be the last time you see some of these people. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a party to get back to. After that, people stopped inviting Gretchen to family gatherings. And nobody missed her at all when she wasn't there. 
Gretchen tried many ways to try and earn the trust of her family again, but it only ended in remonstrations from them as she tried to sneak into events. In the end, she realized that nobody wanted to deal with her any longer. She stopped trying to talk with anyone and became a recluse, barely leaving her home. The rest of the family was happy to see her go after all the horrible things she had done to others in the past. 